is one final thing I want to do on the neck before we move on to the, the body. Uh, the neck carve is going to come much later once the body's finished, but for now I want to put a tenon on the end of the neck and get a, a rough approximation to the rest of the joint because obviously we've got a bit of an angle going on here. I want to get the tenon done now and thicknessed properly for a nice tight fit um, in, in the block. Um, while it's convenient to do so because obviously this is going to get glued into the body of the guitar and I think it's just easier at this stage to get the initial fit done. The rest of the joint, the final um, minute little alterations to the angles um, to allow for the, the neck angle, those will be done once the body's finished. Um, but for now I just want to run it, run this across the, the router table. I'll saw out the rough shape of everything and then I will refine it down using the right router table to get a nice even thickness and accurately thicknessed tenon. Before I go to the router table though there is one little bit of preparation I need to do and that is to uh, the, um, the sides of the neck. They're, they're pretty rough and I want these to slide nice and regularly on the router table so we need to tidy this all up but they're also very slightly out of parallel um, due to the way I jointed this I've cut it down the middle plane the two halves flat what I, I have not got identical um, slabs of wood either side of the center line so I just I just need to plane this down and get it nice and regular exactly the same width of wood either side of the center and then that way we can push it through the, the router, flip it over, push it through and we'll get a nice regular tenon, hopefully. Everything nice and square. So um, not, a, not a trivial piece of uh, preparation because everything's got to be exactly square and exactly even. So that's the first thing we've got to do by hand using a plane. Let me just show you how subtle the uh, adjustments I've got to make to the, uh, the neck. We've got about the same amount of material here as we've got here. Obviously I'm going to be measuring this as accurately with calipers but I'm just using this ruler to illustrate. So we've got about the same material either side here which is good. But when we look now because of the perspective you're not going to be able to see this but the there's far less material here than there is here. I say far less, fraction less and not surprisingly when we put the ruler over here there's a little bit more material here than there is here. Um, maybe you can see the difference. That's much thicker there than it is there. So obviously there was a slight difference in where I cut down the middle of the neck and the whole thing skewed very slightly. Um, so uh, yeah, so we've got to take material off here and here and not off here, but at the same time we've got to smooth this all down. So uh, yeah, we've just got to be careful what we do. I've also got to get this square and a um, quick check with my engineer square reveals I've got to take material off here um, and on the other side it's the opposite way around, I've got to take material off here. So really the two, the two sides are mirror opposites. We've mostly got to take material off here and not so much here but on this side we've got to take material off here and here and not so much here. So that kind of makes sense. My bench wobbles, I know it. I'm going to be building a new bench at some point. That is now square and flat. So we'll reference everything from there, so make sure this is parallel and then do the other side. I'm surprised how quickly that came together. Uh, we're square, we're straight and we are parallel. A little bit more care this side, it's the same procedure but now we're aiming to get the same width here, 35 millimetres, so we've got to take about a millimetre and a half off in total, starting at these two bits. We are now square. I think 
we might be square and straight, we've just got to take a millimetre off the whole thing. And now square, and we are 35 there, and we're 35 there. Ready to go. That was actually a lot more straightforward than I was anticipating, despite the weird shape of trying to play in an area like that. That mark I just made is a rather critical measurement. 356 millimetres measured from the nut. That's the edge of the body. I couldn't actually mark it on the centre line. In theory it is only the centre line that counts because of course the body is angled at this point. I got this measurement from Blender so it's all pre-modelled and should be fine but I'm just going to do a sense check. I'm going to put the template on and just measure where the bridge would go given that mark. Well you'd hope how I modelled this the uh, template would match up with the measurements and fortunately it does spot on. <laughs> Relief. The angle we need to plot is 75.5 degrees, but of course that's actually almost irrelevant. It, it's whatever the, the angle on the block is, because from now on this block determines the angle of the neck. But of course I have made the block 75 degrees. In fact, of course, it's the, it's the angle with the mortise that really, that really counts. But uh, that is 75.5. So that's our angle which we have to plot across there. I've just drawn a second line, which is the line I'm going to be cutting to. It's about two millimetres forward. In theory, if we remove 29 millimetres from each side, that will give us 21mm tenon. Obviously I'm being careful here but actually it isn't absolutely critical this measurement because we're going to be pecking away with the router and uh, should end up with a correctly thickness tenon by independent means but we're going to be cutting close to this line with the saw first so it's wise to get it reasonably accurate.
here's my router sled. It's a very simple affair. Now, I'd only ever intended the work to go here. So, for this pass, that's fine. However, difficult the other way. So, I'm going to have to put the work here for the other pass, which uh, is not really a problem, but it's not how I intended the sled to work. But uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. The turn seems to be about a millimetre, so that's taking two millimetres off the neck, which at this stage I'm okay with, but it needs to be a lot less for the, for the following stages. Actually, I'm going to back it off a bit. <laughs> Just a bit nervous of doing too much, so I'm going to go for a quarter of a turn, which hopefully will be a millimetre off the neck, we'll see. took off more than I thought so from now on I'm just going to do that is really just a twentieth of a turn I guess each each gradation is is a tenth so I'm just going to be very very careful because I only want to take tiny amounts off getting very close it's possible and just one more pass might do it we'll see um, <laughs> can't force it in there but uh, creeping ever closer That is very tight, um, but the wood might move a little bit um, when I do the body, so I I'm happy that that's close enough for now. I like that. Th there's clearly some refining to do on this. I've got a chisel, or, or um, I've got a flush cut saw, which might take that little that little step out there. But this is all refinement that can be done nearer the time of actually fitting the neck. I, I will get this sort of fitted and the initial heel shaped before gluing on um, the fretboard and once the fretboard's on I'll do the proper neck carve and finish off the heel um, but uh, I think that's enough for now I realize that I've got to put uh, screw holes in here because I don't want to be doing that when it's all part of the guitar um, but it's getting late in the day and I need to have a quick think about that um, and a later video um, yeah so that's it uh, make sure you're subscribed of course uh, click like comment um, share the video and uh, we'll see you for whatever is next oh mystery <laughs> bye